In this clip, I will focus on bijective functions, which are functions which are, for which the domain has a special relation to the range of a function. So consider here fx is x squared. Then we see that actually 2 is in the image of the function, so it belongs to the range of f, and we see that this is true because the f of the square root of 2 equals 2 and also f of the minus the square root of 2 equals 2. Then if we look at something in the image, which is 2 in this case, then we will call the square root of 2 and minus the square root of 2 as originals of 2 with respect to f. So we take something from the image and look at which elements x are mapped onto the corresponding fx. So, a formal definition reads, suppose we have a function defined on the set A and its range is contained in B, then if we take B, small b in B, and suppose we find an element A in capital A, such that the f a equals b, so a is mapped onto b, then a is the original of b with respect to f. Is original with respect to f. There can be more than one originals. Yeah, like in the former example, square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 are both originals with this for, for 2 with respect to f. But we can also speak of the original set of B, which is just the set of all originals of B with respect to F. So in this set, we include all A, small a's, with image B. So, for example, if we look at the function fx defined by x squared, then its natural domain is r, and we find that the set minus square root of 2 and square root of 2 is the original of 2 with respect to f. Yeah, okay, but we can sl slightly change the example and look at the following function, which is, is actually a different one than the one discussed before. So now we focus on f defined on the non-negative reals, but given by the same formula. So we have fx equals x squared. So then actually as a graph, we don't get the left part, but we only get the right-hand side. Yeah, only for positive numbers. Then, for this function, if I take some b along the y-axis and b is non-negative, then I'm able to retrieve a unique original, yeah, which is called the square root of b, and this is the original of b with respect to f. Yeah, so now, I discarded the left arch of this parabola, and I get a unique element. We have the following formal definition. So if I take some image, some something in the range, some value f a, and if I can conclude that a should be b, so f a equals f b, and this is imp and this implies a equals b then the function is called injective. So when is the function called injective? Basically, I can show this by performing a horizontal line test. So this basically boils down to the statement that I have maximally one original per element in the range of f. Yeah, so I have maximal there's maximum there's a maximum maximum one original per element in the range. 
because I cannot have two different values for A and B such that FA equals FB. So for example, for example, if I look at the former example F from R to R such that Fx equals x squared, so I have as a domain I have now R and as a formula Fx is x squared, then this function is not injective because I have two elements. If I take something positive, I have two originals for something in the range. So the horizontal line test is not, does give me two different originals for the value 1. f1 equals f minus 1 equals 1. So I have two originals which give me the same point in the range. Now again I restrict my attention to the non-negative real so I look at a function f from r plus to r plus. Then I get for the formula fx equals the square root of of x, that this function is injective. Well, suppose we can directly show it by, by deriving the result. Suppose that the square root of a equals the square root of b. Then it logically follows that a should be equal to b by squaring the terms on the left hand side and the right hand side. So a definition. Suppose we pick a function again from A to set B and this function is called surjective. It's called surjective if for any small b and capital B, so for any choice of B and capital B there is a small a in capital A such that such that the image of A equals B. So this means that whatever I pick in B, it is reached for some element A. So F is subjective if all elements in the codomain, yeah, because Sometimes we know that if I pick f and apply it to A, then I get a subset of B, and B is called the codomain. But now if a function is subjective, then all the elements in the codomain, B, are reached. So actually the codomain is the same as the range of the function f. So for example, look at the function f from r to r, and fx is x squared is the corresponding formula, then this function is not subjective. Why not? Well, I know that the image of f or the range of f is given by all non-negative values. Yeah? So I see the image along the y values. And I also see that there is no no x in R such that the f of x equals minus 1. So horizontal line test over here does not give an intersection point of intersection with the graph. Yeah, so I know that the value minus 1, which is in R, which is in the, this set B, does not give an original. Okay, consider the following example of a function f defined on r plus. So I take the square root. So I take the square root of x, which is a, actually given by fx equals the square root of x. Well, this is a subjective function. Yeah, suppose I take something in R plus on this side, so I take something in a codomain and then I have to show that it's actually reached. So suppose I take, yeah, so this is a subjective function, why? Well, 
pick some small b in capital B, and capital B is R plus on the right hand side, then I know that if I take the value B squared, that the value B squared is just the square root of B squared, which is equal to B. So I know that B squared is an element in R plus, or the set A, that is mapped onto B. Okay, I have a very special property once I have a function that is both injective and surjective. So per image point or per number in the range of f, there's a unique original. And when all, all members in the codomain b are reached, or the range of f equals b, then I have both an injective function and a surjective function, and in this case I will call the function bijective. So a function is called bijective if it's both injective and surjective.